Today I want to show you how to make a party ahead a little bit, you know, party food. For that, usually for me, it's like a large piece of something in the middle of the table, which can be done ahead, like a whole salmon or a whole braised ham. And this is what we are going to do today, actually, a braised ham shoulder. It's quite available in different parts of the country. It's relatively inexpensive, and there is a certain way of using it. Usually it comes slightly smoked, you know, and uh, so-called pre-cooked, that is entirely cooked, and you could have it just the way it is. It gains a great deal, however, if you recook it, which is what I'm doing here. I have here a piece of uh, shoulder pork, which I put in a lot of water, you see, and a lot of water, and that cook very slowly. It should not go above like 180 degrees. If it goes too fast, it breaks, and the pork tends to be dry. So you keep it at 180 degrees, and you can use one of those meat thermometers, you know, to keep it, it's just under the boil. And in that temperature, you keep it like an hour and a half. It does different things. First, it recooks your ham, your pork, you know, and uh, it may shrink a little bit, but the taste is much, much better. And secondly, with a lot of water around, it kind of wash up a great deal of the salt in it, so it makes it milder in taste too. So it's a good thing to do. So water, and you let it cool off, you let it cool off in the water that I have done here. And now we want to trim it. And sometime, you know, depending where the rind here, see this is the bone is in. Uh, I remove that rind from the top, and sometimes, you know, I put it back on top of it, coring it like this. But I know uh, a lot of people tend to uh, avoid, you know, the skin, so you can remove it or put it back. But one way or the other, between the, the layer of skin on top and the meat, there is a large layer of fat, the top fat, and that you want to remove. So I cut right from here to the meat, you know? That will improve not only the, the taste of it, but of course, most of the fat is in, I mean, a great deal of the fat really is in the surface of the skin, and that's what you want to do, remove it. As I say, again, you know, when you finish removing this on top, you can put that back. In our case, I think we're going to remove it altogether. In addition to that, you see the color of the meat here, it's kind of very leathery and tough. I want to remove some of that, a small layer of that, because it's too tough. So just cut a little bit of this. It is not really wasteful, because ultimately the taste is going to be so much better. You can give that to the dog. That's what I put in my, I have several dogs, and I put that in their food. So you go all around like that to be sure that the thing is trimmed nicely all around. You've removed all of that black skin, so now it's been recooked. Now we cook it in the oven. So there is different level of cooking. Now we have this. All of that, we don't use it really, or as I say, maybe the trimming for the dog. And on top of that, now we want to create a type of topping, a type of sauce, you know, that we will put on top. We put it this way. And this is made with uh, dry mustard. I have cayenne pepper and I have um, paprika here. And we're going to mix that in a bowl with a little bit of honey. And that's going to do our uh, very spicy type of topping. I'm sure you can do your own. Sometimes I do it with, uh, with uh, apricot, for example. Apricot preserve, you know, it's very good with that. Puree of onion sometimes. But something like that simple is good too. So all that you do, you spread that on top. And you know, I call that party food because uh, it is nice to have when you have guests. First, you can, you should actually do that ham the day before. That is, recook it in water the day before. Then you leave it to cool off uh, overnight, you know, in the water. Then you can pick it up and you can uh, trim it as I have shown you here. Then put that topping on top of it and now it's ready to go into the oven. And even when it comes out of the oven, it's not when you serve it, really. You serve it when it's lukewarm, we're going to have some juice, it's going to form a bit of a caramel in the bottom, and we're going to do a sauce with that. So now I put that in the oven for like a good hour, like 375 degrees or so, and uh, to form not only a crust, but a nice juice on the outside. And now with this, you know, the pork, even though we did remove a great deal of fat, it's still quite rich. So what we want to do with this, it's a kind of sour 
dish, you know, and I do a sour kind of uh, pickled cabbage dish, which goes very well with it. And into this, very simply, we put like a, a small cabbage, those are one pound cabbage, Savoy cabbage type, you know, very leafy like this. They are nice looking. As well, you have a bigger knife here. And you cut that into inch or two inch pieces, you know. It's going to kind of melt, you know, in there. So we put that into preferably a stainless steel type of pan because of discoloration, you know, you want it to keep a nice color. And into this, we put an onion. Sometimes I put apple in this also, and it's quite good with the apple. But then here we put only onion, cut into half inch dice also here. That's it. You know, those are uh, also country dishes. It's done a great deal in uh, Poland, in Germany, you know, that type of thing sometimes with cumin seed. And here I'm putting just cider, you know, sweet cider. I try to go get my cider and I make my own cider and uh, with, uh, in a farm which are beautiful apple, organic farm, you know, and I press it myself. I like the cider when it's cloudy and fresh. Those are muscat raisins, again, sweetness. Cider vinegar in there, put a dash of uh, salt, a tiny bit of oil, tablespoon, and that's about it. Sometimes I put a piece of butter, it's not really even necessary, and I put that to cook. This has to come to a strong boil, come to a strong boil, and will cook like a, a good 35 minutes so that the juice are reduced and because of the cider and the sugar in it, it's going to start to caramelize in the bottom of the pan, you know, and give a bit of a color to the, to the onion and the cabbage, so it's quite good. And so that will be served with our ham, you know. But other first course, something which is also very good for party because it can be done ahead, we serve a lick, you know, a lick with a type of vinaigrette, and that's one, a very French and uh, very normal dish. In France, the, the leek we call the asparagus of the poor because it's very inexpensive at the market and you cook them, serve them with vinaigrette to like asparagus. Here, unfortunately, it is more expensive than asparagus. However, a lot of people uh, lose a lot of the leek, you know. All you lose is the bottom part here, the root, and after that, the first or second layer, just look at it. If you feel it's too tough and fibrous, you can remove it. By the, time, by the time you feel this is a bit more tender, you can cut it here. This one will be cut here. This happened to be a large lick. This one probably here. Just see where the color change. You see that this one is damaged here, so I would cut it here. This one probably here. This one there, and so on. As you see, as I get inside the lick itself, the color becomes lighter, light green, and it's more tender. And this is the way you want to Clean it, open it in half, and now you have to clean that under uh, water, lukewarm water, you know, under the faucet to clean it up good. Even this, you know, I don't even discard that. I wash it, put it in a pot, and keep it for stock. You know, that's what we do in professional kitchen. So this is what I have done here. I clean up those leek and put them in there. This is stainless steel inside just with like a cup and a half, two cup of water, so that by the time it's finished cooking, I have almost no water left. So that I have all the nutrients, all the vitamin A that I have and the fiber that I have in there, because I have no loss, I don't clean it up, that is, I don't wash the leak under water when they are cooked, you know? And we are going to do that, a vinaigrette type of things for the leak, and I will do it with tomato, uh, I have Worcester sauce, I have red wine vinegar, and a little bit of olive oil that I'm going to use here. So, French mustard. First, maybe I won't need... I like a lot of mustard. A little bit of uh, Worcester sauce. Vinegar. I've always problem to pronounce the name of that sauce. And uh, olive oil on top. Cracked pepper dash of salt, cracked paper, and that's basically it. And to give some color, we are going to do a bit of tomato. I have that tomato here, which has been dipped in boiling water. I will peel it off like this. 
Again, this goes with my piece of leek. I keep it for stock. Cut it in half, and again, press the seed out, you know? I'll press the seed in there. You see, press all the seed out. So the juice, the seed are removed, the skin is removed, and all of that stuff goes in the stock. You know, I keep it. Cut that in tiny dice. This is a nice sauce for a poached fish also, you know? That's it. You want to mix this. Add your tomato to it and don't mix it too much. You want it to be separated. Very often people do a type of sauce and say, I don't want the vinegar to separate from the oil. Well, I want it too here. I don't want the mixture like a, a mayonnaise, you know, very thick. So, I want it to fall in between. We'll put it on this. Now, what you do there, just press your leek more or less to remove, maybe not all of the sauce, but most of the water left over. This is still lukewarm, you know, the way it would be. And keep that water to make soup with it. That's great. Then we keep, we cut that into two inches, about two, three inches. And when I arrange it here, you see, I will arrange some of the lighter green, some of the darker green, some of the darker green here, lighter color, and so forth, so that, you know, the thing is nicely mixed together when you serve. Oh, there you have here. You know, if you go in France in small bistro and all that, you're going to have those leek vinaigrette a great deal. It's a classic dish here. Do it ahead also. Do it ahead and put that sauce ahead on top of it. This is when it's going to go through it, you know. The sauce will go through it, the tomato, and it will develop a wonderful taste, you know. And this is it at our first party dish for today. And when you make a nice party, you know, often you want to decorate the table a little bit. And a nice way of decorating the table is to do something that I have done here with an apple. Apple swan is relatively easy to do. Do it with a green one, yellow one, red one. The hardest part of it, you know, you cut the base and that base will become the head of the swan. And you just have to carve a head freehand here. This is really the hardest part of it. You know, just immediate the head. Often my swan look like duck, but it's okay. And that's it, you cut this out of it, you see? This is the head, the hardest part. And I'll make even a little hole here. The skin is red to make the eyes, you know? So this is your hardest part that you can eat. Put that on the side. Now you want to do wedge here. And it's just a question of cutting a little wedge and cut another little wedge and another one. Those are going to be the wing. Of course, you do one of those on each side. I did it four here. I think I need glasses. Okay, and you can put them right back on top of it. This way, they fit. Then you turn it to do the same thing on the other side. One, two. This is a classic uh, thing, you know, that you teach students in school also. But uh, when uh, my daughter was small, I used to make rabbit. Look at this one, it's broken. Doesn't matter, just put it back. Don't say anything to anyone. Put it there and it's going to work just fine. Then that the two wing, now we do the tail and it's on top of it. What you're doing actually is two or three wedge from the center that is going to extend in the back to do the tail. Here we have them here. And in front of it here, you want to make a hole to put the head. You know, just carve a, a little hole here. Okay, so now it's uh, fun time. Time to put this back. One this way, one this way, one this way. To make a long tail, you know. Then you extend the wing this way, the other wing this way, and that's about it, you know. When you're ready to go somewhere, you fold it back, fold the whole thing back, put lemon juice on it so that it doesn't discolor it, and you take it to a party. You can fan it, open it on the table to do a, to do like a, 
uh, you put the, the, the red wing on the yellow one, the yellow one on the red one, and you can do a nice centerpiece like this. And uh, now in our menu, what we have to do is the dessert. And for the dessert, we have a classic American dessert, a strawberry shortcake. And we use half a cup of flour for this, regular flour, half a cup of cake flour. Notice that I go directly into the flour and level it off. This is what a cup of flour is for me. Three cup of flour, when you measure them this way, is going to be one pound of flour if it's measured this way. And here we have a teaspoon of baking powder and a, a half a teaspoon of uh, baking powder. What is the difference? The baking powder is made from the, 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 the baking powder, right? It's made from... Uh, uh, no, this is not the baking, yeah, this is baking powder and baking soda, I'm sorry. The baking soda is made of baking, baking powder is made of baking soda and cream of tartar mixture. What did the cream of tartar do? It give acidity to it. So when you have something acidic, like I have here with sour milk, and instead of using baking powder, you use baking soda because you already have your acid in it. And sometimes, you know, it happened that you say, she, I just have baking soda, I don't have uh, baking powder. It doesn't matter. Put a little bit of acid in it and it will work. A bit of lemon juice, or in that case here, we have buttermilk. Now you grab that together, you know, and you don't really want to, you want little piece left over in this, you know. You don't want it to be too... Uh... And then we put the liquid in it and you mix it gently, you want to gather it gently, you know, you don't want to make much of a dough with that, a soft type of dough. Okay, that's about it, you know, you have to be very gentle with this. And we spread it out, we cook it, you cook it right away, so it's easy to make, you know. And what I'm going to do, which makes it easy, you know, I put it directly onto my baking, uh, my baking I don't want to fool around with it too much. And uh, it's easier if I take a piece of plastic wrap directly on top, you know. And I use this to press it to the thickness that I want. Let's say uh, here I don't want to lose anything, so I'm going to do them like square. So just press that square, you know, about that thickness. You feel it be right, then you cut them. You can move them a little bit away, you know, this way, this one here, and that's it. I mean, uh, those often are done wrong, but you know, the, the shape really doesn't have anything to do with it. Okay, so this goes into the oven now. Uh, we can brush it actually the top with a little bit of, uh, of that buttermilk, you know. It is nice to brush it up directly into the oven. I have one here and I have another one which is cooked right on top here. Substitute that I'm going to put in the back for the time being while we are doing the sauce which goes with that, the strawberry. And that's very easily done. You see what I have here? I have a strawberry a lot of them kind of damage, so what you do, remove the hole, of course, and any of the white, white part underneath, you know, which tend to be a bit uh, more sour, you know, and any other damaged part, just put it in there, and the rest, then, you keep it. With those trimming, we're going to do the sauce, you see? So here I do the piece, and again, in there. Now I put those trimming in the food processor with some raspberry jam, you know, and that's it. You have your sauce right there. You could put a little bit of liquor if you wanted to. It's not really necessary. Here it is. And we're going to put our pieces of beer in there. I think it's about, about enough, just enough to moisten. You know, remember, we do those... Uh, those uh, recipe for four, so it's not that much. I have enough of a sauce here, really. Here we are. In there. And that can be done ahead, you know, it's great. 
and now we can assemble it together. You know? It's not... You would not want to assemble it earlier, you know, because it's going to get dry. You know? Or you don't want to soak the... You don't want to get that too soft, you know? So look at this one, it's nice. I can cut it open, it's still warm, of course, in the center. I think it's nice and uh, short, you know, this is the way I like it, nice and fluffy. Mm, it's good, it smells good. There, some of those on top. You know, and around. This is your real classic American dessert, you know, the strawberry shortcake. And uh, when I have guests coming from France, I always serve that to them because it's delicious and because it's American cuisine, you know? A little bit of uh, sour cream or even a bit more of juice on top here. I like it dripping. A bit of the sour cream if you want to splurge with it. Maybe a spring of uh, mint, you know, if you want a bit of color here or there. And that's it. We have a beautiful dessert here that you assemble at the last moment, remember? And now we are going to do the pork, which I have in the oven. Mm. She's finely cooked. Look how beautiful crystallized it is, you know? Dark, with those juice in the bottom. And in the juice, I'm putting a little bit of vinegar and sometimes even a little bit of water, just to melt those solidified juice that I have in the bottom. Remember, there is some sugar, some honey in there, so you have those glazed juice. Mm. And on this, you know, you can baste this with it to have nice, shiny, deep, rich color. I want also to show you the cabbage, which now I've reduced, still hot, and I think we're going to arrange this right in there. Cabbage on top, do like a bed of cabbage. They are nice and very earthy looking. And we can put our rolls, you know, right on, on top of it with some of the juice on top. You can keep some of the juice to serve separate. Because now, you know, at the table, all you have to do is to cut into this. See a beautiful, juicy color and it's nice and well cooked. And now the best part of the party is to enjoy the food. This is a great looking roast that you bring to the, it's always like a centerpiece, you know, in the dining room. You put a big thing like that, a big roast. And you can let your, uh, your guests help themselves. They can slice and all that, it's nice. I know that pork, you know, is high in fat, you know, but remember what we did here. First, we recooked it, which make it much, much better in taste, which eliminate quite a lot of salt also. Then we remove basically all the visible fat from the top, then glaze it in the oven. And that on terms of your cabbage, there. you see the cabbage are very high in fiber, and uh, with the resins in it, the acidity, the sweetness, with the richness of the meat, it's a terrific dish for party, you know, easy and relatively inexpensive. Of course, with that, we have a refreshing uh, leek. Leek is always good uh, in salad like that or warm in gratin. The juice of the leek makes fantastic soup. And you have that type of tomato oil sauce on top, which makes it also quite uh, special. And with this, we have, of course, the decoration of our swan, which can always light up a, a table, you know, a nice salad. And finally, we have our strawberry shortcake here and the strawberry shortcake, as I said, the dough should be very delicately done so that it's kind of crumble and it's soft. A bit of sour cream on top. If you want to cut down, you can have light type of sour cream or even some yogurt, it's fine, or omit it altogether. But it is going to be very satisfying to your guests and I'm sure they're going to love it. With that, you know, on a party, we like to serve a any type of wine is fine, but this is a dry Tavel wine, which is a rosé from the south of France, very dry, that everyone likes. I hope you are going to like it too. I hope you're going to try my dish. I enjoy making it for you. Happy cooking! <laughs>